Hey guys, just uh, we're starting out here because I need access to my computer first. So, trying to get my iPad set up. And I've got fresh coffee brewing. I just got out of the shower. I'll explain all that stuff in a minute. Just want to make sure that I've got chat and everything up on my iPad so I can see. My friend, J I sent my friend Jason a message to let him know I was going live, and he's like, "Is this from today?" I was like, "Yes, I'm live now." An angel might pop in. All right, just look at the ceiling for a second. Hey, Jason, hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm trying. I got too many things going on. Let me let me use my wallet. That that seems to be the best use of things. Hey, frog. Okay. Um. So. I hmm, I watched a movie late last night. I was up till probably 2.30 this morning watching uh, Gods of Egypt. It was really good. Um, and I still need to look it up, but is Gerard Butler Irish? I'm, I'm thinking he is. I know the Nicolaj uh, guy from Game of Thrones. He's like Dutch. But I think Gerard Butler is Irish. Just judging by his voice, I can't put my finger on it. Jason, you might know. Uh, I haven't IMDb'd it yet. So, um, first we're going to do, we're out here at my desk. I did just get out of the shower. Um, I planned on going live, like, earlier. And then as soon as I went in the bathroom to get a shower, my brother went in my dad's room to take a shower. And, well, needless to say, he hadn't had one in five days, so he needed one more than me. So, I allowed him to do that, and I went ahead and swatched out all of my nail polishes Oh, he's Scottish? Okay, well, I wasn't too far off. I could hear the brogue in his voice, but I, I couldn't I couldn't quite see. Scots um, have way too much of the, uh, you know, the England influence, so they've lost a lot of their accent. Um, so that's why I was like, I could hear it at times, but I couldn't quite, I couldn't quite pinpoint it. Um, so, and everything on me is like super dry. I am like so itchy right now, it's not even funny. And people wonder why I only shower like every other day. Uh, it's because I'm a potato chip without the oil. Um, I've got fresh coffee brewing. I've got a slight headache from all the nail polish fumes. I've been super busy. Um, okay, so back in January, I did um, videos for like my uh, December Shop My Stash recap. And this was a product for a... It's freaking dark out here. There. This was a product that I said that I would be giving away. This is Shimmer and Shake. This is a Tarte blush. And then in my Ipsy Glam bag unbagging for January 2020, I said that I would be giving away this Lexi brush in the giveaway because I don't use fan brushes. I love Lexi brushes. Love them. These are like my favorite brushes, hands down. But I don't use a fan brush and there's no point in taking it out of its condom and ruining it so somebody else can't use it. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera screen around. I've got both of the videos pulled up. I will pull the link from the video, use the random comment generator thing. Um, I, got, I need to get off of Facebook first. Jason, it's your fault I was on Facebook. Um, but I wanted to do this process with you guys live so that you could see how this works. Um, so, you know, there's no questions or whatever. So basically what it was is that people had to leave a comment with the hashtag giveaway. Not everybody left hashtag giveaway in the comments. I don't think that they understood that. So what I'm going to do is um, make it so that it's just comment generated. Whether they're subscribed or not, that's on them. To be honest, I'm at this point, I don't care about subscribers. I would rather have people that watch my videos than just a subscriber number. So um, you did, Frog. You commented on both because this it was the blush that I told you it would be too orange for you. Because it like looks like an orange bronzer on me. And that's what I recommend that somebody use this for. Is like, unless you really like an orangey blush, this is very orange. Um, and I think I texted you pictures of it too. But I did a collaboration with my friend Shelly from Geek Out of Water. And um, Michelle from Mascara to Midnight. And I did pick up... I finally hit um, 3,900 subscribers because every time I got almost to 3,900 subscribers, I would lose like 50. And I'm like, 
honestly, at this point, I don't care about subscriber numbers. I care about like people that are watching my videos, that like my videos, that comment on my videos, the people that, that, I interact with because I don't have a life. I don't, I don't live outside of my house. Um, I'm home 24 seven, 365. Uh, there's only like two, maybe three times a month, uh, that I leave the house and that's to go grocery shopping at Walmart at like three to 5 AM. So I don't go places. I don't see people. I don't whatever. So my interactions with people on YouTube, I, I really do think about my subscribers, the people that interact with me as like my friends, like Frog is my friend. Now, Jason, I game with, so he's on, he's a friend from a whole other ball game, but, um, you know, uh, people that I interact with on like Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, some of these people, yes, I do know them in real life, but a lot of the times these are people that found me, that liked me, that whatever that didn't think I was boring to watch and they subscribed and, and they comment and like Sylvia who's in Portugal I talk to her on Facebook so we interact on Facebook we don't always interact on YouTube but we do interact on Facebook frog I interact with on Twitter Instagram Facebook tweet text call whatever angel um, I have her on Facebook and Instagram I don't know if I gave her angel did I give you my phone number yet <laughs> I don't know if we've got there. We've both been so busy. I don't think I've... Have I given you my phone number yet? Okay. Well, remind me to do that. Because, I mean, we talk... Angel and I talk daily. Um, there are, like... Um, I miss seeing Ada in my comments, but she's in Finland? Norway? The little fingers of Europe. Um, she's in one of those countries. I always forget. She has to remind me. Um, I haven't seen her in my comments in a while on this channel, but she does comment on my second channel. Um, and there's uh, Amanda from Canada, and then I have my friend Amanda from the Carolinas, who's in the hospital right now, so please send her here your love and energy. She had a massive um, stroke the other day, and she ended up in the hospital again, so she's currently in, hosp in the hospital in North Carolina. Um, so, and then, you know, and I've got, like, Crystal, who her son died in, in December, um, I haven't seen her in comments in a while and I'm worried about her. And then I've got my other friend, Crystal, who um, I talk to on like Instagram and stuff. So, I mean, people that interact with me on social media, I consider them my friends. And these are like people that I would hang out with if I lived closer to them, especially like Michelle from Mascara to Midnight. She's like a 10 to 12 hour drive from me. Shelly, um, from uh, Geek Out of Water, um, her and I have been talking for like years, but it's like I don't, I don't see these people in real life. Um, I do have a collaboration coming up next Sunday with somebody just commented on a video. They thought I wasn't allowed to keep makeup for. I didn't see the rest of it. It popped up on my phone. So since I'm sitting at my computer, I'll look. Um, the glass glass cadman i have a collaboration coming up with them on sunday but they live like an hour from me <laughs> but they also work and they have a fiance and um so it's like been difficult trying to do like a meetup so we're doing this first collaboration like online separately from our places and then we will do like a meetup and do like um they do my makeup i do their makeup kind of thing uh let's see oh it's jade Oh, uh, yeah, she's talking about my black eyeshadow video. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's do the giveaway. Coffee smells like it's done. We'll get coffee, and then we'll go in the bathroom to do shop my stash stuff. So let me... I've got the phone plugged in so it wouldn't, like, die because I was watching YouTube in the bathroom. All right, let me flip you around. And, yes, I'm wearing my pajamas, and, and I don't care. All right, so here's the first video. This was the December shop my stash. So I'm copying the link. I'm going to the YouTube random comment picker. I'm going to paste the link in here. And then we're going to load the comments. Uh, there's four comments. Frog, I think you and I are the ones... Um, hello? I think you and I are the only ones that commented on this video. Let me look. 
All right, uh, Frog, do you want the do you want the blush? I mean, do you want this? Because if not, I will just put it in with the the fan brush for the next giveaway. Because like I said, I think it would be way too orange for you personally. All right, so I I'll grab this link. Let me go back. I'm gonna paste that link in. And we'll load the comment. Invalid link. What do you mean? I cop I copied it right from the damn bar. Oh, it's because it has 16 seconds on there. Whoops. What? All right, let me. Fine. You want to be that way? We'll we'll do it this way. We'll go down to the video. I'm gonna copy the link here. And then I will delete you and paste it in. Um, invalid video ID. Please check the video. If the video exists and is public, private videos can't be. It's not private. It's public. Um, it's got 32 views on it. There's 19 comments. Let me make sure that I like reload the page. Maybe her website just is broke. Well, let's try this website. Go away. There's a random comment picker on here, too. There we go. Random comment picker. All right. Pasted the link. It's going to filter duplicate users, which is nice. There's five unique comments. All right, so we're going to start the start the picker. Okay, Mind and Soul Mommy was the winner. So, I'm going to go to the video and I will comment. give her like 48 hours hopefully she'll see the reply um sometimes youtube doesn't like notify people of the the giveaways and if for whatever reason um she doesn't like comment back or something what i will do is i will um i'll pick somebody else and i'll just post it what i'm gonna do now is go ahead and edit this and then that way That way, um, it's done, and then I will leave the name down below. So she won the Luxy brush and then the Tarte blush. And if Fro Frog, I will send you a picture of some stuff if you want something off my. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on my bed right now. If you want something, I will send it to you. Um, 
and close all these tabs down. I don't want to freak my computer out having a bunch of stuff open. responding to Jade's comment. I love it. I type depends and it, it, it wants to type in suspends. I let her know I was live so if she wants to hop into chat she can. That way I can explain why about powder products. You know for powder products and stuff yes there's a shelf life on a lot of things but it just depends on how well you take care of your stuff and if the pigmentation's still there and if it still works and all that kind of fun stuff all right so coffee and then we'll go pick stuff but I guess I could talk about some of the the other things um, while I fix a cup of coffee that sound good yes no maybe so I've got the dishwasher running, so, you know, there's that. I kind of need it, Angel. Just going to prop you guys up on the counter. Don't you fall over. You see my Eeyore shirt? I got Eeyore on for a shirt. I got Tweety on for my pants. Oh, I forgot I didn't open this. I pulled a brand new one out, but I didn't open it. it. Takes me like months to go through one of these big tubs. And it's, believe it or not, the price per weight on these is like 20 cents cheaper than it is to buy the like small ones so I just get the big ones and call it a day and then I have cream for like six months and I'm going through everything in our pantry that's what all this stuff is I have literally taken everything out of our pantry lately and we have these like they're grain mobs that have gotten in they came in and like granola or something and now they're like all in anything with grain in it in the pantry so I am like trying to find everything that they're in if not I just I'm just gonna bomb the whole house those fuckers are so hard to get rid of Emily what you doing did daddy leave it in the house did daddy leave it inside oh he's all neglected oh he's all neglected oh there he is is that daddy I see a shadow And I never drink coffee without hazelnut creamer. I mean, I can, I just don't like to. All right. I actually have a light on out here in the living room, so it wouldn't be like pitch black. Get up! But yeah, this house is really dark. Like, really dark. Oh, and Jason, you asked about the couch. You said that the, you know, said something about how big the couch was. It's huge. Right now I've got it, the vacuum out here. But this is where I was sitting when I was doing the video for Shelly. And I, I drug this little light out. This one here, let me turn it on. Because this room is dark. So I had that little light. And then I had both of those lights on, and then I had my ring light on, just so you could see 
me out here filming because if not I mean this room is like super dark so and my dad brought these tapestries back from Africa yes the couch was eating me I was sitting right on the damn crack right on the crack and then my grandmother painted this yeah this couch is huge this actually is a uh a, either a full or a queen size bed so let me flip you back around and yeah oh shit, i knew i needed to grab something else for my desk my ipad so i can actually read the comments oh i'm i'm not awake hence the need for coffee so right now my bathroom looks like this i literally swatched out all of my nail polish shades um waiting for a shower i mean i could have taken one but it probably would have been bad and my bubby is on hey can i have my dirty laundry give me that give me my you can lay it on my hair tie. You can lay back. Oh, I made him lick himself. Oh. Ice, ice, babe. What? What did I miss? Ice, ice, baby. I don't, I don't know what I, what did I miss? Okay, so I didn't do an official, like, shower. Oh, uh, yeah, well, the showers are tied. They're like, my shower is here and my dad's shower is on the other side of the wall. But like I said, he hadn't had a shower in like five days and he smelled horrific. Like, have you ever smelled like laundry that sits in the washing machine and sours and then goes, like, it, it goes rancid? And then you know how like food smells if you um, like let it go bad, that like really bad rotten food smell. Combine those two smells and that's what my brother smelled like. Needless to say, it wasn't good. I snagged it. Hi baby. If you guys ever hear like snoring or purring or any, he's usually laying, when I am in here filming, um, he's usually laying on the floor right next to me. So if you ever hear that in a video, I will never apologize for my animal. Cause he's such a good boy. He's such a big kitty. Am I disturbing your nap? Nothing. Okay. He's like, you put me down. He's like, you put me down. Now he's beating me with his tail. Beat your tail. So, I've been filming a lot. Um, I have five videos I filmed yesterday and five videos I filmed the day before that because I was trying to play catch up because I had a headache for like 10 days. Not fun. Um... I have two Valentine's Day looks done that I haven't edited yet. Uh, one of them went up. The Lele Posh is like technically video two for my Valentine's Day series that I'm doing. That was the second video that I had um, filmed in the Valentine's Day series. But because it was brand new products from Lele Posh, it went up first because I wanted to get my first impression up. Um, so that's why that went up ahead of everything else. I do have a like an all like pink makeup look that I did. Um, I even like mix the lip colors to get like the right shade. Um, and I think it turned out beautiful, but trying to wear a helmet over artistic looking um, Valentine's Day makeup, it ate half the makeup. So that wasn't cool. And now I've got to wash the inner lining of my helmet. So <laughs> It has its drawbacks. So I did pull stuff for January, but it was mainly because I had planned on doing a shop my stash. But then I got filming. Um, let me let me just 
Okay, this is my little filming book. This is the little book that I write ideas down in. And I'm going to put my pen where videos I've recorded stops. And then I'm gonna flip to the beginning of January just to show you all of the videos that I filmed. These are all of the video of I, videos I have filmed in January. This, this part here is from 20, uh, 2019. So if you look, I have filmed almost as much in January as I did from, let's see, when did I start this? June. So from June to December or January. Um, anybody else see a problem here? So I've been doing inventory videos. I don't even know how many is here. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 or 7, 38, 39, 40, oh wait, 40, 41, 42, 42 videos I filmed in January. I still have the nail polish one to film. I have swatch videos listed out as to things that I need to film swatches of. So this is a list of everything that I still have to swatch for my channel. And then here's a video idea that I talked to Angel about the other day. I've got the page. I've got everything written down. I just haven't filmed it yet. So that's 42 videos I filmed just in January. That's also not counting the videos that I filmed for the individual shades for the Lele Posh items. And I think there's 12. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, oh, 14. So I recorded 14 little miniature individual videos for these of just swatching these. So 42 plus, um, what is it, the number 14? <laughs> so 42, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So 56 videos. Hi, Jade. I filmed... 56 videos oh shit I just realized five of those videos were filmed yesterday that was the first so 51 videos were filmed in January I filmed 51 videos in January I'm crazy I know well Angel you've had you've had a very very good excuse i know when i have like mouth issues and stuff i don't want to film either because um like my broken tooth that i was telling you about the other day ain't no way because my eyes like water and twitch and they're sensitive to light and just like when i have like headaches and stuff uh, -uh. um oh and everybody say hi to george and george's cousins and his nephews and their friends George showed up, what was it, two days ago, Angel? And when I was in the shower, George had like a hard hat on. And when I got in the shower, uh, George had like this, this heavy duty hard hat on it. And it came off in the shower. And then when I was towel, uh, towel drying my face, George broke open and um, threw up on my face. So, um, yeah, actually that's what's doing it. The... Um, peel that I uploaded the video for that. I actually used that peel. Let me look. I actually filmed some of those in December. Uh, yeah, most of those videos, uh, you haven't even seen it yet. There's a mask co video compilation that will go up like this week, I think. Uh, most of those videos were filmed in December. 
but the ordinary peel mask I think I did like January 8th or 9th I started to write the date down and I crossed it off because it I made it a separate video because um, I actually talked through that one so yeah the ordinary um, that chemical peel let me get it this one here the AHA BH1 A1 I've used it three times now and that I used it like Monday or Tuesday last week and then within two days George showed up so Oh, I might as well, you know what, I might as well just leave this open because I'm going to be pulling product from here. Let me take this off because I'm starting to get hot because the bathroom's still warm for my shower. So, during my inventory videos, I know I talked about in, um, like, the bronzer, uh, the highlight one. I don't know what all, uh, I think a blush one went up in the palette one. I'm doing, like, declutters as well as, like, an inadvertent project pan. And I watched Kelly Gooch and Samantha March and Lauren May Beauty and they do project pans all the time. This is a basket of everything I'm going to try and project pan or work on or use up. So I will be pulling some products from there. Oh yeah, this th it's like it's like I looked at chocolate wrong. George is, George is usually the result of me looking at chocolate. I don't even have to eat chocolate. I just have to look at it and my face goes <gasps> So, I haven't filmed my project pan yet, so that's why they're all still in the basket. But, I have palettes pulled on the counter for uh, Valentine's Day looks, so those are like separate. But in all of my magnetic palettes, I did pull items for this month. So, let me set those out. Put my cup back. I'm trying to rearrange the bathroom so I can move and things like that. Um, I did pull a couple of things already to start my tray off. So let me move my roll card a little bit closer. With some of these like inventory videos, I've been pretty like savage. Um, and I do have a Depop store. I do have items listed on Depop. I just don't I haven't had time to list everything makeup wise on Depop yet and I've got a lot of stuff. Am I gonna do a shoe depanning? I'm confused. You mean my like my project pan. I plan on filming that separate. So, um, I guess we'll get into eyeshadows. Now, in my video I filmed yesterday, which you, uh, Angel I'm sure can attest to my backbreaking experience with that, I swatched out every, every individual and single eyeshadow I have every and then I pulled the product yesterday and realized it wasn't included in any of my videos so I'm like oh so this is one of the products this is the Byron Bay from Lenny this is actually a loose eyeshadow this should have been in the video I filmed yesterday it was not could I film a swatch of it and talk about it and add it to the video I could but the video is probably like uh, the first part of it before the battery died was like 24 minutes long and then the second part of it was 28 minutes long and then the camera shut off and then I had to restart it so the video is like over 45 minutes long from what I can tell just by gauging how long I filmed for so uh, yeah so that's the only single eyeshadow I didn't have in the video but I'm going to be using mainly my single shadow like collection for this month. Um, I've pulled a lot of like Valentine-esque colors for like pinks and uh, purples and reds, things like that. Um, one, because I want to gauge whether or not like on my personal brand eyeshadows, um, I want to gauge on whether or not I need to keep them. I've already thrown one in the trash because it was hard pan. 
but it's also like 15 years old. So in my little three pan palettes, I have like a neutral one that I pulled colors for. And then in the five pan one, I pulled um, more like springy kind of colors. And then this is all of my Lele Posh products. And then over here, I stuck in four of my shadows that I kind of thought complemented um, her shadows. Then we have um, all of my, these are, a lot of these are my super silky eyeshadows and a few of my bold effects eyeshadows, which are like my raw pressed pigments. Um, they're like loose pigments that are pressed. And then here I pulled blushes and bronzers. So I've got the Hula bronzer, the two from the Balm, the Elizabeth Mott. And then I pulled my Essence matte bronzer. Um, I've only used it for I think maybe one month solid, maybe two since I bought it. So then I pulled my Physician's Formula highlighter in, get, give me the pan. This is in Full Moon. It's like a yellow colored highlighter. And now I won't go back. Then we have an eyeshadow from my line, which is called Moon Glow. It's an iridescent highlighter. We have this one from M Princess, which is in the shade Biscuit. It's like a neutral based white. Um, what are you? Um, hello? They're a little, they're, the little back fell off. And I don't have any fingernails right now. I just chopped them all off. I'm going to see if I can pick up, because I have a double stick tape on it, so I'm going to see if I can pick it up by that. Gimme, gimme, gimme. All right, this is, oh, this is an eyeshadow. It's the Luna by Luna's Juliet shade. So um, it's actually an eyeshadow I put in there. And then I have one from the Balm as well. It's an eyeshadow. And then I have three blushes. Uh, one of them is, I think, Kitty Pink from, the magnets on these palettes are no joke. Oh, that's mine. This is Faith. And then the other one, I think is Pink Ice. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't get them out. Yeah. Ooh. Pink Ice just broke. But that was one reason why it was like in here anyways. Is because it I dropped it and it, it broke. It was actually in a palette, and now my iPad has blush all over it. And then I have Party from Tarte in here as well. Look, it's all over my iPad. Yuck. I got blush on the freaking counter. It's all over my hand. All right. So that's one really good way to uh, pan and I <laughs> pan a, bl a blush. That was not intentional, but I knew it's a, it's a shade that I don't like use a whole lot, and um, so it's okay. I'm not heartbroken by it. I planned on using it uh, up this month anyways. So the other items that I pulled this. Byron Bay loose eyeshadow. It's actually more like a glowy blush. I will probably use it as like a blush and an eyeshadow um, on the days that I do use it. But it's like gold and pink and beautiful and um, so there's that. I also pulled the Dome blush from, this is their English Rose. It's just a real standard like neutral pink. And I pulled No Flash Needed from Colored Rain. Actually, I think this is a yellow colored highlighter too. I guess, I guess I'm doing pink and gold this month because that one's a yellow based highlighter. The Physicians Formula one You're not gonna believe this. Okay, let me swatch out all the highlighter shades that I pulled for this month, and then y'all can laugh with me. 
I might need to rethink one. Let me turn the ring light around. Can you guys see a trend with the, there's two highlighters here. There's a highlighter here and a highlighter here. Can you see a trend with the, especially these two? I honestly think on the face, you wouldn't be able to tell which brand was which for these two. So that is the Physicians Formula Moon Glow here. And then the No Flash Needed down here from Colored Rain. And they're almost identical on the skin. This one is Moon Glow. It has a slight greenish yellow shift. And then the M Princess one in the shade Biscuit is like just regular, like straight up white. So that's the only one that doesn't look yellow. And because Moon Glow shifts to a, a yellow and a green, but I mean, I kid you not, both of these shades are almost freaking identical. Let me do... Can you tell which one's which? Because I actually had to do a double take and remember which finger that I used for this one versus this one to figure out which one was which. I mean, can you say dupe? Okay, so you can buy a $10 highlighter or you can buy one for, I think these were like $6.50 on sale. Um, I think they usually retail for like eight bucks. So you could save like a dollar and buy one from an indie brand. Or you can buy one at Walmart for a little bit more money. I don't know if they make Full Moon as like an individual highlighter though. So um, I know this came in that big, like the light medium kit that I bought that had the blush, uh, two highlighters and the bronzer. So that's, and you know, that's funny. When I was doing my uh, highlighter inventory video, when I was swatching out the highlighters, I didn't realize how many I had that were so similar. And now I can't get you back in. Did I like move something? Here, let me move a few things around and see if I, there you go. Now, um, now you kind of fit. I'm gonna have to hot glue that damn magnet on the back of that Juliet shade. It does not want to stay. So, colored rain. This one here is No Flash Needed from Colored Rain, and I got this as an add-on from Ipsy for $3. So, but yeah, it's like almost identical. I cannot believe, I can't believe I did that. And then if the moon, the moon, uh, the moon shade of mine, this one here, Moon Glow, if it didn't have a shift of green in it, I'd be like, okay, I gotta pull a different highlight color. And I might still pull another highlight color. Um, but I do have the one from um, Lele Posh that I will be using as well because I have pulled all their products. And there's that beautiful pop and bottle shades that I, I plan on using for a highlighter. So, freaking blush on everything. Okay, so now I'm going to dig into the basket. I will be putting these things back in here as well because of the fact that I haven't filmed this video yet. And I just have um, tissue paper in here. It's not, it's only like a quarter of the way full. But um, I put the tissue paper in here because the basket has holes in it and half the stuff is like tiny and I didn't want it to fall through. Frog, why didn't you repress it? Just put a little bit of alcohol in there and stir it up and smear it back in the pan. So I have two mascaras on the pole because I want to use them up. I have the Falsies 
from Maybelline and the Makeup Forever Excessive Lash Mascara. So I'm going to pull both of those. Um, I'm going to grab my VDL Lumilayer Primer. I'm going to try and use that up. My... Um, here's a heads up, but the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define might have one use left in it. And this one is completely almost freaking empty. I am shocked. I used an entire freaking concealer. And yes, I took the stopper out because I couldn't reach the stuff in the bottom. And I have to use a brush to, um, to get down into the bottom. So I've never 100% ever used up one of those before. I'm going to pull my Essence uh, Pastel Yellow Color Corrector. And I think I'm going to pull the mini the mini of my Light Sand from Tarte. This is a little too dark once it dries down. But um, I think I'm going to pull one of my concealers from up there to mix with it so I can actually get a shade that I can use. I'm going to pull the Cover CoverGirl Intensify Me liner and the Smashbox Always On. These are both black liners. I'm going to pull this Dr. Jart BB Cream. It's way too dark, but I use it as like bronzer. What else do I got in here? Okay, I'm debating on whether or not to throw this out or not. This is the NYX Whipped Lip and Cheek, whatever. It's in Pink Cloud. I hate the color. I hate the hate the product, but I'm going to try and use it. I'm pulling one of my lip glosses and the L'Oreal Color Region Glossy Fawn. And then I'll get in. Oh, yeah, brow products. Um, ColourPop Bang & Brunette in Elf Clear Brow Gel. I'm trying to use up this side. What else do I have in here? All right, I think that's it from this basket. Now, um, I'm going to allow myself to pull products as I need them, like eyeliner wise, depending on the makeup look that I'm doing. What I'll do is I will go ahead and pull one of the liners and I will use it and then I will stick it in my tray and then that way if I need another liner and it's close enough to whatever I'm doing, I will just use that. So I will go liner based on looks that I'm doing as well as other lip products. These will be like my staples that will stay in the tray that I will use um, and then I will just add to it however I need. I'm doing my shot my sashes a little bit differently this time around because I found that some of the things that I did before were a little bit restricting. I have a brown liquid liner. It's from Chella. Where are you? Mm -hmm. This one. This is a brown liquid liner and it's waterproof. I do have an eyeliner video that I, uh, inventory swatches, all that kind of stuff. And then I have these two that Jason sent me. One's like a reddish brown and one's more like a neutral brown. So I have these two as well. So I have a couple of brown liquid liners. Put you back in a hole. Um, for concealers, I think I'm going to use the Smashbox one because um, it's very fair. But when it dries down, it's it's almost my skin color. So I think I can mix this and it's very watery. So I'm going to pull that as well to use with my other Shop My Stash products. I'm not going to pull any other like lipsticks. Um, like I said, lipsticks and liners lip, or lip products and liners. I will pick for whatever look that I'm using as I go. And then... Do I need to pick another highlighter color? <laughs> or should I just use the four that I already have picked, even though two of them are almost the exact same shade? I don't think I've got highlighter anywhere else. No. I mean, I can use the this one here. I can use this as a highlighter. I just got to do like a very light hand with it. What do you guys think? Should I pick another color or should I just 
stick with the four that I have. Well, five technically. I don't know if that's a highlighter. Angel, maybe you'll know. That pop and bottle shade, is it specifically a highlighter or is it an eyeshadow? I mean, I figured because it was in a bigger pan that it might have been a, a, a highlighter. Oh, both? Okay. Well, then that works because then I've got a different-ish shade of highlighter. Put your foot in the darn track. No, no. You. Yeah, there you go. One side in and the other side was going... Um, I know for next month I plan to pull, like, palette products like I have a blush palette a highlight palette and a contour palette I plan to pull those for like March to use those oh yeah it's dark which is why I was mixing it with starlight so the other thing I wanted to ask is um might as well put this up I ain't got no room for you I'll stick them in here for now. Just stay. Um, trying to clean my stuff off. Do you... Stop it. Things falling on, on me. Do you all want to see, like, a um, skincare inventory as well because I got a lot of samples like just to give you an idea these are like the masks that are in that video that are coming that's coming up this week these are the masks that I've been testing out since like December and January that um, I wanted to get more use out of and get a more firm opinion on um and this is just two drawers I have an entire like little tray of just masks face masks so I didn't know if you all wanted me to do like skincare inventory videos too because I thought about it and I've got like a bunch of different cleansers and stuff and I know last year when I did skin like a skincare breakdown video I did like uh, cleansers, toners, makeup removers and masks in one video and then I did like moisturizers, oils, serums, um, eye creams in like the other video and I did like a big long video for all of them some of these products are like new some of them are samples that I got like just to grab a few these are all samples that I haven't even tried yet so we've got an instant cleansing balm this is a moisturizer uh, this is a serum and we have a toner like, these are just four products that I haven't tested. And then I've got the entire basket of my skincare. And I took all, like, the samples off my counters and whatnot, minus the masks, and just kind of dumped it in my skincare basket. But most of that shelf down there is skincare. It's full of skincare. And I don't know if I can get it out. But this basket here is masks. Just just masks this is actually a, a face toner it's almost empty um but it's like do we want a video on like that where uh i know that there's a few products of each of these that i haven't even tested yet some of them i'm very familiar with some of them i don't know enough about to even talk about yet i don't do reviews like most normal like channels and stuff because i come from an educational background from the salon industry where I've done uh, full, full on facials, I have had specialty training for skincare, things like that. When I look at a product, I look at the ingredients, I look at the pros and cons, I look at the skin types that it can work for, I look at possible allergens, things like that. That's what I come from when I'm doing reviews of products. I don't just say, oh, this is a good product, you should go buy it. I try and give you pros and cons when I'm looking at a product, how it works, what it works well for, um, drawbacks that it might have, things that I like about it, things I don't like about it, things like that um, is what I try and include in my reviews so that people have a more well-rounded or better understanding of a product because I could go and be like, 
This VDL Lumilayer primer is awesome. It's a radiating primer. You should go buy it. Okay. What's it do for you? Oh, it's moisturizing. It, it makes your skin glow. Okay, what else does it do? Um, you mean I'm supposed to tell you more than that? It, it's great. You should go buy it. Use my link below. I'll earn like 3% off of your purchase. But what else does it do? You know, that's... When I'm watching review videos, those are the things that I think about when somebody's reviewing a product. I want to know the information. How do you feel about it? What does it do for you? What are the drawbacks? What are the pros and cons for you? And maybe what you, if you know about, I mean, a lot of the people that are doing skincare videos on YouTube have no knowledge of skincare at all. They've never worked in the industry. They have no idea on, um, what certain ingredients do on the skin and what they what they do and don't do whether or not they're harmful to the skin whereas I do I have the education I have the training I have worked in full service salons I have been a facial specialist I know how that stuff works um I mean it just I don't want to get on my soapbox here I will go ahead and get back off but I look at reviews a little bit differently Okay, so I don't know. I, I guess because I come from a place of education where I went through, you know, makeup classes when I was young. I went through cosmetology school when I was 17. I worked in the salon industry until my heart attack. You know, I, I look at those things because I have the education and the experience and the... Um, yeah, see, and that's why it's not that I suck at reviewing things. I like to give you information. I like to give you like pros and cons and give a better informed uh, video or ideal or thought process behind a product. I mean, my lips are dry, so this is usually what I do. If I leave a lip gloss on the counter in the bathroom and I'm like wandering by the bathroom door, I'll just kind of snag it on the way by, use it and put it back. That's usually how I use lip gloss. And if it's a lip gloss that's sticky, usually I, I use it and, and I end up going and you get the nasty little spider web things. That's a bad, bad thing in my book. But if it feels like a lip balm, I'll continually use it. But, um, what are some things that you guys would like to see from me? Uh, I know I don't like do like dedicated reviews a whole lot just for the simple fact that I look at a lot of information. Um, I will do my research on the products. I'll do research on the ingredients. I have done in depth like breakdowns on ingredients for skincare and talked about what they are, what they do, what they're for. And then, then I get like six views on the video. Not that the views really count, but I mean, you figure if I'm spending like four days researching a video and then I get six views, what the hell is the point of me doing it? Yes, Angel has a channel. I'm not allergic to strawberries. They're actually my favorite fruit. So, no. Um, I have sensitivities to sunflower seeds and sunflower seed oil, and um, I do not like cucumber or coconut. Not that my skin reacts badly to it. It's more like my sensory receptors for the scent of it makes me nauseous. So coconut and cucumber make me want to puke my brains out. So that would be a no on my book. Um, I have a primer I think I just decluttered because it smelled like cucumbers and I had another one that smelled like coconut and just putting it on my face made me want to do puke. It was disgusting. So, no. I don't even know. I've been live almost an hour. Frog, on the Ordinary's website, they have really good like breakdown videos on how to use their products, what they work well with, uh, the science behind the products. 
Actually, I've got, I only have two ordinary products. Let me find the other, other one. Um, this is actually the, the organic rose hip seed oil. And I haven't done, like I've got moisturizer and stuff on. But how I like to use it is I get my face a little bit damp. Usually I put it on right out of the shower. Not, and I've already got lotion on. And I take like six or seven drops. Never touch the dropper to your face. That's disgusting. I usually work a product in in circular motions first and then I do the motions that you're supposed to do and I use my fingertips and like from the, the second joint to my fingertips to like work the product onto my skin I see a lot of people they put product on there and they're like how stupid is that use your fingers that's what we have them for. They're really good at manipulating product. And I do work the product all the way down my neck. And then what I, if I'm wearing a shirt, I reach up and I come up here and I come straight down in between the girls. And because if you notice as we age right in between this area, we get wrinkles. And I'm starting to notice wrinkles there and I'm like, I don't have enough to have wrinkles there anyways, but I figured I'd better start moisturizing down that far. All right, so this is just the rose hips oil. What I recommend when you're putting oils and stuff on your face is if you do one of two things. Um, if you mix it in with a moisturizer, like usually I'll put a dollop of moisturizer on the tips of my fingers and then I'll drop the oil onto that and then I kind of like pat my hands like this and then I pat it on my face and then massage um, because you are like mixing the oil in with the moisture so that way you don't like look greasy like I do but I have such severe dry skin I could literally use this oil like seven times a day and still have dry spots so um, hi Kelly we're at in Canada because <laughs> I know part of Canada speaks French and other parts of Canada do not speak French um, but for like when you're working with your skincare they always have like people that tell you okay I, I have cousins that live in Toronto so yeah I am like super itchy super dry very very tight uh, sensitive skin I I could sit in a sauna where people are sitting in there sweating their balls off, right? And I could be sweating as well. But then, like, you could see, like, oil dripping off of people in a sauna, and I'm sitting there going, because I'm so dry, I'm, like, itching constantly. Como se va? And I think I need to do an empties video soon. I was kind of waiting on a few more items for my bag, but um, do you guys want a live stream tomorrow of me using the Shop My Stash products? Oh, that sucks. I, I'm from Florida. So, uh, Spanish is the main language here, and then we learn English. <laughs> we have a lot of Spanish-speaking people here in the state. So, um, it's funny. I can't call anywhere anymore that's local without getting Spanish as the message first, and then they go into English. It's like usually um, for Spanish, press 9. 
for English press like one or three or some crap like that. Welcome to Florida. So I have a few palettes sitting on the counter um, to do like holiday looks with. I do plan on doing more Valentine's Day looks. I know people ask me to do them. Um, and I have some really, you have a question? Okay. I have answers sometimes. And I have coffee in my system now, so I might be awake enough to answer them. I'm using my iPad for them. I'm doing a live stream on my phone, but I use the iPad so I can see the comments. Um, but this so far, organization here. So these are the products besides the eyeshadows that I pulled and then whatever's in my magnetic palettes to use. Oh, that's one thing I didn't pull. I didn't pull a foundation. Uh, vitamin C, depending on what ingredients are in it, can cause sensitization um, of the area, but usually it's a fragrance ingredient in there that can cause um, sensitization like issues where usually you have heightened sensitivity, not more like um, lack of sensitivity. If you are having like numbness and things like that, that's more neurological. So I would go to a physician and have it checked out. Um, if you're having numbness in certain parts of your skin, most likely it has something to do with a neuron receptor not receiving a signal versus a skincare product that has killed the nerve. Uh, which it could also be that as well, but um, to double check with that because I have fibromyalgia and I know that I can like flick my nose and my lower back goes twink and you're like Ooh. Uh, So it could be something as simple as like a neurological condition like I have or it could be like a fragrance ingredient in the product that you're having a reaction to so um, I only have I think two three vitamin C products. One of them is an oil from Red Earth. I have a Sunday Riley vitamin C like lotion, which is awful. And then I have the Derma E vitamin C serum. And those are actually, the Red Earth and the Derma E are really good products. They have pretty decent ingredients, but the Sunday Riley one has a lot of fragrance in it and it has um, way too many uh, different types of sensitizing agents in it that can damage the skin, which is one reason why I usually only use it on my legs. Because I don't have to, I mean, they're like 100 feet long, so I'm lucky if I even see bottom part of my leg most of the time. But you have to be really careful using um, products with, with fragrance in them or sometimes essential oils. And this coming from somebody who has done aromatherapy, sometimes people have allergic reactions to essential oils and you don't know it. And sometimes combining different essential oils, you never know which one you're allergic to until you do like an actual patch test of the individual oils and watch how you react. I got mine in an Ipsy Glam Bag Plus, so I didn't pay for it. So, yeah, I can't afford Sunday Riley either. Okay, uh, I didn't pull a foundation product, so I'm... I know I've had this for like three months and I haven't used it yet. This is the ABH foundation in 100 and I will pull this sample. Oh, and the add-on that I got for Ipsy this month was the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie in LN2. I need LG2, but it was as close as I could get, so I got it. So we pulled the foundation. Um, I already have a primer. I haven't tested this one out, so I guess I'll pull this too. I totally forgot to... I moved my foundations and stuff. I'm gonna pull the Cover FX. This is the Water Cloud Primer. And it's, um, it does have dimethicone and it does have silicones in it, but it's like the seventh ingredient on here. So hopefully I'm not allergic to it. I will do a patch test on it first. But this was one of the samples that I got in that sample bag from Ulta. So I will try that out this month as well to get a better opinion on it. So, yeah, I forgot to put my powder on the tray too. I'm like slowly reorganizing all of my bathroom. Oh, and that's another thing. That's one thing 
I never really pull, but I have. Should I pull at least one pair of lashes? I mean, I don't wear lashes all the time, but I have them. Yeah, my friend Amanda's always complaining about how she doesn't she doesn't have access to Ulta, and I swear I I told her I said I'll you know you can use my account and like buy it and have it mailed here, and then um, you know I'll just ship it to you in whatever box it comes in. As long as you pay for the shipping, I don't care. I mean, I have no problem, you know, sharing my Ulta account with a friend. Like, I have i don't understand why you guys don't have Ulta there. I know that there's one, I think, coming to Toronto or one just opened in Toronto recently. Or maybe it was Vancouver. I don't know. I'll have to ask my friend in Ottawa and, and find out if Emily has one there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if depending on the order, because I'm in the USA, if it's shipped to me, it should be free shipping, and then all she has to do is pay shipping, and I can mark it as a gift, and then, um, so shipping should be based on, like, weight or whatever, but then uh, import fees should be, like, little to none if I mark it as a gift. Yeah, Sephora and Ulta are, like, an hour and a half to two hours away from where I live. I could have swore Ulta just did uh, a store opening. I thought it was in Toronto. It, like I said, it could have been Vancouver. Let me move my my basket. And and don't judge me for wearing my pajamas. I'm comfortable. I don't usually wear a bra anyways because I don't have a whole lot to put in a bra. But I mean, I'm sure you ladies are sitting at home in your pajamas, so why can't I sit in my home in my pajamas? And anyways, they're cute. Who doesn't love Eeyore? Look at him. Isn't he adorable? Eeyore's like my spirit animal. That and I got Tweety. So you have sass and laziness. I mean, come on. That's me, like wrapped in a cute little Eeyore package. Yeah, um, don't, I know a lot of people that live in northern Canada, they have to use like Amazon just to get freaking groceries. Oh, very rarely, if ever, you will catch me in a birthday suit, Rob. I do not like being in my birthday suit. It makes me uncomfortable, which is kind of bad to say. Because, you know, it's it's your birthday suit. Oh, these came from Walmart. These were like an $8.99 find at Walmart, man. They're fuzzy and they're soft and I like them and they're warm. The only thing is that I really hate about these like fuzzy, like fleece type pants is when you go out and the wind goes right through them. Oh, buddy, does the wind go right through them. See, and I, I, I it's not because I'm self-conscious about how I look. I'm okay with how I am naked. I've just had way too much abuse and I'm not comfortable in my skin naked. Um, so it's more along the lines of every time I've ever been naked, something bad has happened to me. So I don't like being naked. Just how it is. All right. So these are magnetic lashes that a brand sent me. And um, these were awful. I don't know how to use them. I might like sanitize them and see if I can send these to Carol because they came with like instructions and stuff. And I think there was a little, I think there was a little tool to help with these. I might have to find it. It's probably over here. But anyways, um, so I probably ought to just get rid of those anyways. Then we have the two lashes I bought recently from BH. One of them is 302 and one of them is 205. That's what they look like. Let me move this up a little bit so you can kind of see. I haven't I haven't used them at all. 
they're brand new. Then we have my Ardell's 105, the one pair I've worn the absolute shit out of. I really like these. And then we have the Ardell's 110, which they're like demi wispies almost. Uh, no, I use the Kiss Lash Adhesive. It's latex free. Then we have the Kiss Lash Blowout. I think this is pa yeah, Page Boy. Got these from an influencer. And then these are the 101 kit. Yeah, I'm highly allergic latex. So I use the Kiss Lash Adhesive. It's latex free. These were the ones that a brand sent me, and the brand, like, badgered me for months. The lashes are pretty, but I have to be very careful using them. And I've actually saved, like, all the little, all the little bits and pieces that I've cut off, I've, like, saved. The lashes are pretty. They just, like, fall apart. And then I have these that that Nicola girl from Scotland sent me before she went, like, psycho on me. These came from China, so they're kind of like poorly made. I've worn that pair. And then the other pair has glitter on it from me doing a... I think those were the ones I wore with my Halloween look. Duo Woo isn't usually latex free. You have to get the one for sensitive skin, which is in the green and white tube. So, um, yeah. Usually the Duo Lash Adhesive is, it has latex in it. So you have to be very careful with it. But the Kiss Lash Adhesive is, um, the aloe one is latex and formaldehyde free. Because I'm allergic to both latex and formaldehyde. So, what should I, should I pull at least one, one pair of lashes? Because, I mean, I'm going to be doing Valentine's Day looks, and I know a lot of women wear lashes. I mean, I have lashes, but. But, this is the lash glue that I used. And it's latex-free, um. I have oh, also the ones that come in the BH Cosmetics one. Now, the first one that I opened, it like exploded on me because I wanted to do a patch test. And I did a patch test and I looked at the ingredients. But the BH eyelash adhesive is also latex free. So that was nice. And there's no formaldehyde releasers in here. And then this is black. So they have, these come with like lash glue. Yeah, that one still has it in it. It's one of the other boxes that I opened. The only thing is, is this is the, like, kind of tube. You open it up, and then you stick the thing down in it. And my first tube, like, exploded. So that wasn't fun. I had um, lash glue on, like, everything. And I tried saving the lash glue, and it just, it turned, like, gummy and gross. I don't know. I don't know what pair to pull. Why don't I just pull this pair here because they're kind of long and flirty. They're pretty. I don't usually pull lashes when I do these like chop my stash things but and I'll see if Carol wants that um, the ones I hate because she loves magnetic lashes. She can get that stuff to work. All it does is piss me off and make me cuss at it. Yeah, the green and white lash lash glue tube from Duo is, it says sensitive skin on it. It's latex free. Also, there's this one from Kiss. Let me get the package. I have a new one. I haven't opened it yet because there's, I don't need to open it yet. This is what this one looks like. This is like $4.99. I think the Duo is like $6. So this one here is latex and formaldehyde free. And it works really well. I don't have any issues with it.
I went ahead and kept out the thing for Carol. I'll send her a picture of that and see if she wants it. Because like I said, she likes wearing those things and I don't. So now here's the tray in all of its glory. So this and the single shadows is what I pulled. Oh, the kiss? Yeah, it's, it's like $4.99. You can buy it on sale at Ulta. You can get it at Walmart. You can buy it at Target. Um, I don't know. Oh, you can buy it on their website. On their website, sometimes they do sales on the, the actual kiss products website. Um, you can get it for like $2.99 sometimes. Or buy two, get one free. Or buy one, get one 50% off. So they usually do like really good sales on there. And they sell lashes on there. And they're absolutely beautiful lashes. I mean, they have some of the most inexpensive but nicely looking lashes out of like a lot of these like cheaper lash brands. I like Ardell and Kiss lashes just for the simple fact that they're inexpensive. Um, I, I don't know how these women spend like 20 plus dollars on a pair of lashes. Now granted, my Kiss lashes that I, I have, I've worn them like 10, 15, 20 times, and I just wash them with soap and water. Um, sometimes I use makeup remover on them to get the lash glue off. It peels, usually peels right off. And then I wash them with soap and water to get any like eye makeup off of them. And then I set them on the edge of my sink to dry, and then I put them back in the little kit and save them. I don't know how these women are only using these like $20 lashes for like one or two times and then throwing them out. It makes no sense to me. And like I said, um, the BH lashes, I just picked up like four pairs of those for like $2.25 each. Two bucks. Two dollars and 25 cents each. I spent like ten dollars, I think, total on lashes. Four pairs of lashes. So two, four, six, eight. No, nine, nine dollars. So it was a dollar off. And they came with lash glue. They came with a little tube of lash glue that will last you for like ages if it doesn't explode on you like my first one did <laughs> so yeah see I have the one that came from influencer two brands sent me to like test out and the rest of them I bought oh Well, I've been live streaming for a little over, I can't even read it, let's say 83 minutes, so about an hour and a half. Is there anything specific that you guys would like to see me do? Um, any like color combos that you want to see for Valentine's Day, um, specific videos, things like that? I'm open to suggestions, recommendations, things that you guys want to watch. I mean, like I said, I've got a shit ton of stuff filmed. I plan on doing at least one, if not two, inventory videos a week. Um, swatch videos go up on Thursdays. I've got all the way up to the end of the month already scheduled for swatch videos. Um, I've got a bunch of swatch videos to edit, and I've got like 12 to film. Somebody asked me to swatch out yellow eyeshadows. So that's going to be fun, going through all of my palettes to find yellow eyeshadows. Oh, that's something I wanted to ask. Just for an example, I have this on the counter because I wanted to use it for a Valentine's Day look. This eyeshadow palette has two yellow shades. We have a matte eyeshadow up here, and then we have a shimmer down here. I think with the blue and the green, I'll have to go back and rewatch them because I filmed them like two years ago. Do you guys want to see me swatch out like shimmer shades as well that are in the same color family? Because I don't remember if I did that with the black. I think I only did like black or like the black with like shimmer in it or like satin matte shades. I don't think I, I swatched like any black shades that had like that were shimmer shades. And I don't think I even own a black shimmer shade. Hang on, my dad's phone sounds like it's ringing.
bring it. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, sorry. Um, my dad is on call manager this weekend, so when a service call comes in, it goes to his work phone, and he had just gone outside when his phone started ringing. Okay, so Angel, you think swatching both shimmers and mattes would be more appropriate? Because I think with yellow shades, not, not only do I not own a whole lot of them, but a lot of like the yellow, hello? Where, where do you go? No. No. It left me. Um, that a lot of the yellow shades that I have, a lot of them are real like chalky looking, like literally like the yellow sidewalk chalk that you would draw on the sidewalk with as a kid. So that's a lot of the things that I had. I was looking for a really, really good yellow shadow. And I think the closest to a really good yellow shadow that I have is like the Jawbreaker yellow is nice. Um, the Uh Huh Honey palette is really good. Um, a couple of my BH palettes that have yellows in them are good. But like the majority, I even bought like singles from Morphe. I bought singles from NYX trying to find a really good yellow shadow. And they are like crap. They are patchy and they're chalky and they look horrible on the skin. And I'm like, no matter how you like pack and blend the yellow shades, they look like crap. You think purple is a bad shade to try and like make and, and get it to swatch out and look nice on the skin and not patchy? Because basically it's just, you know, blue and red mixed. But like yellow shades I think are probably the hardest to make because you have to use a white base mixed with other um, pigments to get the even the yellow shade to even show up. So I think making a yellow shade is difficult just from a um, chemical standpoint, trying to get the pigments just right. And you figure yellow is a primary color, so it shouldn't be too hard to make a yellow shade. But when it comes to eyeshadows, I think that there's a couple of brands that have done it right, and, I'm, and a lot of the yellows that I have are kind of crap. So, my standpoint on that. Again, on the soapbox. But I will let you guys go. Um, if you have anything that you want to see specifically, just leave it as like a comment or um, hi. My, I'll put up a post on my community tab and say like what videos do you guys want to see or what information would you like to have that kind of thing um, that way if somebody has a specific question or they'd like more information about a specific topic I can either if I don't know I'll do the research for it um, yeah I think that's it I think I might actually go eat something I haven't eaten anything today so yeah hopefully dad didn't eat the rest of the leftovers that I made yesterday because I'll be a little heartbroken I'm watching the iPad for comments there's no comments so I'm guessing you guys think that I like left and then come back oh there's a comment I'm not I haven't really been hungry today I haven't been feeling that great yesterday marked my four-year anniversary cancer free so Yesterday was kind of a stressful day for me, just, and I think I did it to myself, just kind of reflecting on everything that led up to my surgery and how I was feeling and the thoughts that I was having and what support I did have and the support that I wanted but didn't get, um, things like that. And people that I thought I could rely on that ended up basically telling me to go fuck myself uh, when they found out what was going on or when I notified them what was going on, I basically got told to go kick rocks. And so I was like, I don't know, I think reflecting on some of the harder things that I've been through in life kind of um, gives me a different perspective of people. And it also 
you know, going back and thinking about what my mindset was like four years ago, the fact that I had cancer, it didn't, it, I wasn't upset. I didn't care. I didn't have any like strong feelings about it one way or the other. I knew I wasn't going to die. So it, I wasn't like worried. Um, I didn't like question the process. I didn't ask a lot of questions. I just, I went in, I had some tests done. I did a biopsy. They, they gave me some information. They said, you've got cancer. This is what stage it is. This is what we're going to do. And I said, okay. My, I mean, literally my give a shit just got up and walked off and I'm like, all right, when are we scheduling the surgery? What do I got to do? Where do I got to be? You know, what do I have to do? And, and that was, it was really, I think for me, it was like kind of a nonchalant thing because you figure after you've died at least once, it doesn't matter anymore. Like when I had my heart attack at 27, I just, I was dead. So I think now, any time that I get a diagnosis of something that most people would like freak out about, I'm like, okay, are you back? I stole it again. What did I miss? Um, her name is listed above. It's mom something. I gotta go back and look. I don't remember either, so it was in the chat. All the way at the top. Mind mind and soul mommy or mind and soul mama, something like that. I think it's who won. I, I edited the video so she knew. It's still up on my computer screen, so I can go look at it if I want to. my big old kitty so I squish it and I'm gonna hug it and I'm gonna squish it and I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna squeeze it and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pat on it so ugh. I'm gonna love it he's my boy my heavy boy it's buzzing you love your mama. Hi. <clears throat> okay, well, Bubby and I said bye bye. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go get something to eat. He's probably just gonna lay back on the bathroom rug. Move my roll cart back. No, no, Crystal's too fair for that blush. That blush was made for somebody with more medium skin tone. That blush would make her look like somebody that needs to stand on the corner in red lipstick and hoop earrings. So yeah, no, that blush would look awful on Crystal. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't send Crystal that blush even if she had one. I'd have done the same thing and been like, nope, that would look horrible on you. You can't have it. It's called Shimmer and Shake. It's from Tarte. It's, um, I'll go get it. It's on my desk. You see how orange it is? It's almost as orange as the damn packaging it's in. It's awful. So, yeah, no, no. Frog, I'm talking like somebody of Hispanic descent that has like those really rich, uh, medium, um, like neutral to warm undertones in their skin might be able to pull this off somebody that's a nice rich um brown color that's like not paper like i am but like a really pretty like um like a mediterranean 
like kind of skin tone would be nice. Uh, Hispanic women will probably look really pretty in this blush. Even like some like a lighter skin black girls would be pretty in the I don't know if this blush would show up on medium to deep uh, black girl skin, but I think lighter skin tones like um, Adriana would probably look good in this and she's red bone. So um, I think she could pull this off, but she's also a lighter skin black girl with a lot of uh, warm undertones on her skin. So I think she could get away with this. So, um, yeah, that blush is not made for white girls like me. <laughs> Frog, I've seen, seen your skin color on Instagram, and I know you edit the shit out of your pictures, which, you know, if the, you do you, but um, just by knowing what you look like from Instagram pictures, this blush wouldn't look good on you. I have the Tarte Party blush I've had for over a year and I've used the shit out of it and I go heavy handed with my blush and it still looks brand new. And I was stupid during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale like late last year and I bought Dazzled which is another blush and it's a full size. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Let me... Here's Dazzled. But I what I hate about this one is it does this. I hate that. It's a magnetic palette, but I have this one and then I have Party, which is lighter than this. And I've used Party so much, it should have like some sort of pan in it. It don't. I'll probably have that for the rest of my life. I'll have to look and see what that one looks like. Let me see. I think it's... I have party in one of my magnetic palettes. Let me look. And then I'm going to go get something to eat. i got to be careful because this blush just broke. This one here is party. I mean, it's other than a little bit of wear on the edge for me depotting it. I mean, this blush is just now starting to show wear, and I've had it for a while. So, um, yeah, it took me like a year of using it like every other month to actually get it to look like it had any use on it whatsoever. I don't know what Tarte does with their blushes, but I don't know if it's they press it too hard or it's just the formula of it because they're supposed to be like clay, Amazonian clay blushes but their blushes take forever to use. So, all right, I'm gonna go see if I can reheat leftovers. And um, if you guys wanna live stream tomorrow of me like using the makeup, I will do that. It just depends on when I get up and how I feel. Like when I got up today, I didn't feel good. So I rolled over and went back to sleep. I didn't, I didn't get up at like 10 o'clock this morning like I'd planned, but. Yeah, it's like 6 o'clock now, so it's, it's like dinner time for most normal people. So this is breakfast for me, but dinner time for everybody else. Oh, and I, I probably won't film this tonight, but I will probably film this tomorrow. These are all of the nail polishes, and the page, the paper stinks. Oh, my whole bathroom smelled like nail polish. So I still have this to film. And then I should be done with all my like inventory videos and then I will do the project fan video. There's Dad's phone again. Anyways, I will let you guys go. I will see you in tomorrow's video at noon um, and then maybe a live stream um, in the afternoon. So I will see you guys later. Bye. Have a good one.